Brian, thank you so much for having us to your trading floor here in New York. Well, David, it's good to see you again. Happy holidays, and you can see our team working away, uh, doing what they do best, which is working with their clients to make a little money for the firm, too. I must say, a lot more people here than the last time I was here, frankly. That's true. That's <laughs> true. This group's been back for a good bit of time now because it just was easier to function uh, and do what they do in the markets for the clients they needed to be here. But they will work from home for the first you know, 10, 12 months. I mean, like everybody else, it was a little different. So, Brian, uh, top Bank of America, you have almost a unique uh, vantage point on the economy world. Let's talk about the economy. One of the big dis points of discussion in recent months has been inflation, where we are in inflation. We're going to get some numbers out tomorrow morning, actually, on CPI. Where do you think we are right now in inflation in the United States? We have inflation. That's not. It, that's actually not the debate. It, it, the, the average inflation, you know, for the last several quarters has been higher than target. The question is, where do people think it's going to go next? And I think that's what's kind of on people's minds. So if you look at it, what you're seeing is the wage growth and and the expectation of wage growth and these talented people and what they're going to earn and what they didn't expect to earn next year. That's where the inflation is really there. And it, it's not. It's known that we have it. Now the question is, how do you bring it back in? And so if you think about an economy growing at six, five half to six percent this year four percent next year low fours next year and two percent in 23 the, the goal is to glide into that trend growth rate without causing a recession and that's the hard work of uh, the transition monetary policy has to go on now so, so as I say you have a, a particular viewpoint in the economy particularly because you have a lot of small and medium-sized businesses the middle market you deal with across the country and tell us about the effect of the supply chain on those companies and therefore perhaps on inflation well, as a bank, one of the things, one of the effects that we didn't like is they, they aren't using their lines as much because they aren't store, you know, putting up as much inventory and hiring as many people just because of shortages. And people can't forget there's shortages in labor now, too. So it's not only goods to manufacture, it's also the people to make them. And so when you talk to our clients, they all give you, it's, it's, it's messed up. It's getting a little bit better. It's easing forward. It's been a problem for many months now. And it's the belief that it is totally... Um, you know, related to the virus is, is true, but it, there's also a tremendous amount of final demand in our economy right now. Consumers are spending a lot, buying a lot of things, and we can talk about that separately. So businesses are able to you know, increase prices because there's only so much goods to sold, and that leads to inflation. But more importantly, they, they are starting to see a little bit of help and are starting to use their lines, but the reality is it's a real concern. If you, One of the risks is that we need people and goods to manufacture for 2022, and those things got to straighten out relatively soon, and that's why you're seeing the administration, bring, the, bring other people in to help and getting the people together and figuring it out. But it's been going on for uh, 10 months now.